Well, welcome to the Ancient Game Ninja. What is an Ancient Game Ninja, you wonder? I'm not getting any younger, I can tell you that. And played all these games and just really enjoyed them. And I find myself playing a lot of retro games. And I know there's a lot of folks out there on YouTube that do this kind of thing. But I've probably watched all their videos and figured, well, what the heck, put my own spin on it. And there's actually a lot of games I play that just haven't been reviewed. This is not one of them. There's plenty of reviews on Dragon Warrior. The uh, reason I started out with this game is simply because it's really the game that got me into role-playing games. Um, it's just a, it's a classic, really. So, when you start up Dragon Warrior in 1986, um, I probably played it in about 88, I would say. You're in Tan Tenjo Castle, and the king is talking to you about how there's this evil dragon lord, and he's just wrecking everybody's stuff. So... You're the hero. It's just a classic tale. The, you know, I was over at my friend's house when I was a young kid, and, you know, his dad played Dragon Warrior, and my friend didn't even play it, or not really. So I got to playing it with his dad. Next thing I know, I'm asking for it for my birthday or Christmas, I don't remember. Um, one thing you'll do in Dragon Warrior is you'll save a lot of money and do a lot of grinding. That's just the way of a lot of RPGs, but. In Breconary, you're going to get, you know, new gear, the copper sword, leather armor, small shield. It's going to take a while, so you're going to find a lot of these slimes. And you're going to be doing a lot of this, leveling up. And as soon as you seem like you get more gear, it's more leveling up and more monsters. In the early game, you can talk to this guy. He'll throw some MP your way. Kind of just saves you a little bit of money at the end. Well, after you level up for a bit, you can go to Garingham and get more gear. Yep. And it's really expensive. So half plate and large shield, get a hand axe. This cave here, um, when you're in caves, this is kind of unique, but you can't see nothing. A torch will give you a little radius of sight, and the spell Radiant will give you a bigger radius of sight. This is kind of a neat... Dragon Warrior thing. Kind of harkens back to the old PC games where they, you know, you had a, a view, a limited view area. So in here, you don't have, I don't think you have to do this. I just did it for the flavor of it, but you can kind of get a little bit of the story of Erdrich and how you're the descendant and the hero. And then you're going to eventually end up in the swamp cave here. And there's kind of two things that the Swamp Cave does. Is one is get you to the southern continent, and the other one that's actually where the princess is being held. But we're skipping that for now. We're going to Rimud, Rimudar. I can't pronounce anything, but whatever. This guy here sells you a bunch of keys, and that's going to open up a lot of the game for you. Pretty much get you everywhere. Coal here is not where you get cheap jeans, but has actually got the flute there, and you'll need that later. Once you've leveled up enough, you can fight this dragon here, and uh, later on this dragon will just be a regular monster. But here he's actually a boss. Yeah, once you beat that dragon, you'll save the uh, Princess Gwalin and yeah, take her back to the castle Ten Tenjul. And from there, she'll give you the Gwalin's love, which gives you the coordinates um, according to how far away you are from the castle Tantengel. And really, the only use for this is to actually know where the Erdrix token is, but if you know, you already know, so it's right here. So come back to Grindham, and you're going to use a key, and this is going to bring you to a dungeon that has the Silver Harp, which you're going to use later on as part of um, the creation of the Rainbow Drop. Cantlin is protected by the golem, and the flute that you got in Coal can put him to sleep. Uh, even then, he can wake up, and he's kind of a tough boss, but if you keep playing the flute, keep putting him to sleep, you can eventually work him down. I was level 16 when I did it, but it was pretty tight. And in the Cantlin town, there's a bunch of vendors, but this guy here has got a flaming sword and the silver shield, so you'll end up saving up forever for that stuff. 
you know, here's here's a place that I leveled up as a kid, but I tend not to level up here. I kind of like this other spot over here and use that magic armor every three steps I take. I get some hit points back so I can kind of last forever and just slowly grind while I watch Netflix or something. Um, in Hoskness, it's been taken over by monsters. The Axe Knight here has uh, protecting the Urdrix armor, and that's the final armor you'll get in the game. So once you can beat him, you're done buying armor anyways. After this, you're going to go back to Cole, and if you come this direction, there's actually a shrine up here. And this guy, he will give you a... Staff of Rain provided that you have the Silver Harp. Come back to the Tantangel Castle and use some keys. You can buy more keys here. And there is a secret right around the corner, and that's where you get the um, Stone of Sunlight. So now with the Stone of Sunlight and the uh, Staff of Rain, we're getting there to make that uh, raindrop. So the Southern Shrine... If you got the token of Erdrick and the other two items, you can now get the raindrop. And from there, you're going to go back northwest to Sherlock Castle. And right here, you're going to use that. And it's going to build the Rainbow Bridge so you can finally get to Sherlock Castle. Now with Sherlock Castle available, it's basically endgame, but we have a lot of levels to get. So, back to here and do that for a while. And one thing I want to say is Dragon Warrior has got kind of a, it's kind of brutal at some points. Like, these guys a lot of times will run from, especially at lower levels, because they just end up healing themselves a lot and you just can't get nowhere with them. Um, this is an example where I could not break away and died. And... Whenever you die in Dragon Warrior, you lose half your money, which is really rough. That really doesn't help you buy expensive items like silver shields and, and flaming swords, etc. Now, in the castle, there's a hidden stairway. Here I've got already searched out and found, but if you don't see it, you just have to search and you'll see it. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you the path to Erdrick's sword here, which is the final weapon in the game. And grab that early on so you have it. Likely you'll do your leveling elsewhere until you get into the, at least the 20s, I would say. Once you've got the Urgic Sword and Urgic's Armor and the Silver Shield, that's, that's pretty it. That's pretty much it. There is no purpose for money in this game anymore. So after all that work to get all that money, nothing. So here, if you notice, this is the direction to the final area which has Dragonlord in it. Um, this is much later. I'm level 30. You don't have to be level 30 to be Trigon Lord, but I'm kind of sometimes I'm a completionist, so I just did the excessive grinding. And if you notice that your experience is 65535, and really what that is is that is the 16 bit integer. If you it's the limit of the system, so the because the Nintendo was a 16 bit system, um, it could calculate numbers up to that num one more than that number, so. That was the cap. It, that's the 16-bit era. Well, you fight Dragon Lord, and he's got his own sprite. Um, kind of cool. Got crazy hair. Looks like a wizard. Doesn't take much to beat, but then you quickly find out that he's much more than he seems. Yeah, and Dragon. You know, the, one of the interesting things, if you listen to this music, it actually sounds like Shadowgate. It's very similar. Um, Shadowgate, I think, is a much older game as it was a PC game, but something because I played Shadowgate recently, uh, I just kind of noticed, I'm like, man, this sounds like Shadowgate. Um, another kind of interesting thing with Dragon Warrior is typically when you have these RPGs and you have random encounters, you know, they'll, after a random encounter, it'll generate some number, like 200, and every step you take, depending on the tile, will be 10 or 15 reduced from that number until you hit zero, and that's the next random encounter. I would imagine Dragon Warrior's got a similar code, but the thing that's crazy about Dragon Warrior is you can hit monster after monster. I mean, I think I've seen where after an encounter, the next step is an encounter, and then the third step is another encounter. And then other times you can see um, much, you know, more distance, so it's really varied. You know, I think in 
most RPGs, they put a minimum, so if the random number is always at least greater than 60 or something like that. Uh, I could have, you know, I was pretty conservative with the fight here on Dragon Lord. I could have kind of rolled them over quicker, but I was kind of done with this game because I'd grinded so much, so I just kind of slow rolled them. And this is it. That's Dragon Warrior. It's a classic. It got me in the games. Um, I felt like I, it was a, kind of an homage to it, my first one. Plan to do more of these, and I hope you enjoyed it. So, you know, if you did, give me a thumbs up or a like or a join or whatever. Kind of not savvy on a lot of the stuff and haven't really done anything like this before. So learned a little bit on the way. Um, I would imagine that future videos will have a little better job of voiceover and editing and, um, you know, knowing what I'm doing. But this is basically my swing at it and hope you enjoyed it. If you're like me, you've watched everything else. And if you found me, you've probably seen everything else. Well, this is Dragon Warrior and I've had a good time. Adios. Till next time.